Do you need to calculate the cost of goods sold using the weighted average inventory method and you're not quite sure how to do it? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. But first I want to say I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now back to the video. If you're someone who finds accounting tricky, give this video a thumbs up. That way I'll know to make some more of them, making accounting simpler for you. Thank you. I'm also trying to reach the 4,000 watch hour mark that is required by YouTube for monetization. So anything you can do to help me get there would be greatly appreciated. I have some longer form videos, including relaxation videos on my channel that you can put on in the background while you're working or studying, and that will help both of us. Thank you. Today we're going to calculate the cost of goods sold using the weighted average inventory method. And the way to calculate the weighted average inventory cost is we take the cost of the goods available and we divide it by the total units for sale. So the total cost of units available for sale divided by the total units for sale. I've got a chart here showing multiple purchases throughout the year. We've got a beginning inventory of 100 units. The cost is $10 per unit, so that's $1,000 is the value of the beginning inventory. And then we've got various purchases throughout the year. The number of units are listed here. And the cost per unit for those purchases, you can see the trend is going up for the costs. Inflation, you might want to blame that on inflation. And of course, for each of these total costs, I'm taking the units, number of units, and I'm multiplying it by the cost per unit, and that gives me the total cost. I won't bore you with those multiplications. I've already entered them in here. And likewise, I've added up the total number of units that are available for sale, and I get 1,100 units. That's total units available for sale. The total cost, I went ahead and added up all of these in this column, including the beginning balance, and I got $13,300. So that is the, we have here the total units available for sale, and we have the cost of goods available for sale. I need to divide those two to find out the cost per unit, the weighted average cost per unit. I'm going to pull out my calculator and we have, and I'm just going to do it in this box here, the cost of units available for sale is this 13,300 and our total units available for sale, that's this number here. I'm going to divide it by that, 1,100. So I have 13,300 and I divide it by the 1,100 so I get a unit cost of $12.09. There's some more beyond that, but in this case, we can just round it to nine cents. That's our unit cost, our weighted average unit cost. But we're not done. It was asking for the cost of goods sold. So that's how much did the units, whatever we sold, work out to be. Well, we didn't have anything here showing us the sales, but we do an inventory at the end of the year and we see that there's 5,000 units left in the warehouse available for sale. So that's our ending balance. So actually this should be 150. I apologize. We have 150 units in our ending balance. It wouldn't make any sense to have 5,000 units left. We only had 1,100 for sale. So I made a mistake there when I was creating this problem and we caught it. So this should be 150 units at the end. So we wanna see how many units we sold. We had 1,100 units available for sale. That was the beginning balance plus all the units purchased and we have 150 units remaining at the end. So those are the ones that are unsold. So we can see how many we actually sold. So it's 1,100 minus 150. That leaves us 950 units are sold. We sold 950 units. Again, we got it from our total of units available for sale 
and we subtracted out our ending balance, and that gives us how many we sold. We have 950 units sold, and we're going to multiply that by our weighted average cost per unit, which is the $12.09, and that's going to give us our cost of goods sold, so 950 times the $12.09 gives us a cost of goods sold of $11,485.50. That is our cost of goods sold. That's how easy it is to calculate it. That's all I have for you in today's video. If you like this content and would like to see more accounting videos, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.